Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. Good morning, Melbourne. Welcome to your Tuesday. It's going to be a beautiful day. What are we, what are we doing? Day. What are we doing today to make ourselves feel better about this situation? I'm going to go downstairs yes. and I'm just going to pump some iron. Are you? Oh, yeah, God. I haven't been down there for three weeks. I've let the boys down. I've let the team down, Swanny. Because you've set up some equipment in the car yeah. park. It's called the iron car park. The iron, iron car park. I'm going to go down there in solitude. Car park like, first. Like the great marvellous Marvin Hagler when he used to go into training camp, wouldn't see his family for 10 weeks. Nuts. I may not reappear. Sounds Swanee. like a dream. I'll uh, tell you where the uh, Casanovas have hit stashed the muesli bars down there. Are these their muesli bars? Yeah. Oh, you need keep, some energy. Keep it oh, under your hat. Absolutely, I need some energy. I can't do any foot stuff, though. I went and got an x-ray yesterday on my toe, Swanee. Unbelievable. This is driving me mad. I've got it this would be. turf toe injury. and Turf toe sounds like something a horse has. Yes. Yes. Well, yeah, that's a good point. I don't have hooves, but uh, I feel like I've got a hoof at the moment, the way I'm running. And uh, I used to see, in the back in the day, Swanee, when you see the injury list in the AFL, mm. and you'd say toe, you go, you weak prick. Yeah. You yes. can't play because you've got a sore toe. Mate. You've changed your tune, I've haven't you? I've changed my tune. I think I'm, I must be going soft. Can you believe his park medal? He's done it all. Mm. He ran into a car once, and remember the car yeah. came off second best? Second best. And now turf toe's got you. From you running across toe? the road, hitting my toe on the curb. What toe is it? Your big toe? Me or? big toe. Me left big toe. Mate, it is just... I have heard that the big toe is a terrible injury and that if you lose your big toe, yes. you can't walk anymore. You're stuffed. Yes. It's you're like because the equilibrium's all out. Imagine oh, me on the Just dr- the toe. You've oh, got to look after I your toes. You get a bit wobbly on the drink at times. Imagine me without a left big toe. Oh, no oh, good. Right. He's no good. good. The beer, here he goes. He's gone over again, He's the big toe. He's gone over again. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. When it's time to trade laps around the supermarket for a trip to... Just point me in any direction. My bags are packed. It's time to what if it. What if has great deals on a range of hotels and holiday rentals. Plus, you can book flights and car hire. Visit whatif.com. What if? It's Aussie for traps. <laughs> Morning, ladies and gentlemen. How y'all doing? <laughs> it's time for an education into country music with Brownies Music Muster. Oh, it's been yeah! too long too since long. we've had this itch scratched. I'm really excited about this one too. Got a little band. I found them in New Jersey, Swanee. Great. Uh, New Jersey, not known for their no, country music it's singers. it's not. But uh, they started in 1995. This was released in 2014, so it took them a good 20 years. What are they called? The Snake Oil Willie Band. Oh, yes. Sounds good. And, That's uh, a great name. Made yes. up of three blokes. They look like three truckers. Big beard, swanny. Um, they're probably uh, slightly overweight mm-hmm. by the sounds of this song. <laughs> My body could use a little slimming. I keep my shirt on when I go swimming. Yeah. And I ain't seen my feet since 1984. <laughs> the old lady wants to roll in the hay. We turn the lights down all the way. Cause I don't look good naked anymore. Oh, who does though? <laughs> yes. Jonathan Brown does. No, I do not. I do not. Jonathan makes love in front of the mirror. I don't of course look he does. Naked. I love that bit. The old lady wants to roll in the hay. We turn the lights down all the way. Yeah. Uh, what about the next verse for us, Dino? Well, I used to be a hell of a man. I chop wood with just one hand. Wow. But I can't do the things I've done before. Well, it all happened kind of slow. Sound effects. But I guess I kind of let myself go. Oh, well. Now I don't look good naked anymore. It's a Ca- real. It's catchy, isn't it? I'm keeping the chorus to the end. It's very catchy. A bit jaunty, just bouncing yeah. along. I imagine paying shoulders. He's yeah. in the studio now. Shrugging. <laughs> They'd be just shrugging along, wouldn't they? Can you bring uh, spoons in next time? I feel like oh, playing the spoons. Yes. yes I love it. Spoons would be magnificent. Yeah. Should I get you some spoons right now from the kitchen? Can you get us some spoons? I'll be two seconds. Yeah, go and get some spoons. This song is fantastic. I love the uh, film clip of this Dino, too. It's just got a couple of random uh, hot ladies. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Washing. Car, 
washing a car. <laughs> what, like, like full cheesy? I oh, know they got the they got their clothes on. Yes, but you know, just full cheesy washing the cars. So they got, you got the sexy ladies, yeah. and then the the big fat man, the, the, the big fat boys, complaining about his body. A couple of randoms there complaining. <laughs> Swanee's brought in some spoons. Ah, oh, beautiful. Now Swanee. let's go, let's get a part. Thanks, Swanee. Yeah, Swanee, we've got uh, one more verse to go, and then a chorus. Okay. Are we ready? Yeah. Uh, now I like this third uh, verse. This is a beauty. Here we go. With each and every passing year Came a lot of french fries and beer Yes And my belly hung a little closer to the floor You need your microphone closer to the spoon. Come on Now my belly as big as a truck And the old lady don't wanna She don't wanna Cause I That's my favourite thing in any song when you think it's going to say a rude word and then it changes. Oh, yes. And uh, now my belly belly is big as a truck and the old lady don't want to. She don't want to. Because I don't look good naked Naked anymore. anymore. No, I don't look good naked anymore. Oh, yeah. Yeehaw. I mean, I'm a deep-fried double-wise version of the man I was before. That's a sad state of affairs, isn't it? But <laughs> Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. On Wednesdays we do Jokes Aren't Funny and we had a gorgeous caller, Kay, who called in. Because the jokes are never funny. Nah. So what we do is we chat to the callers, basically. And uh, we met Kay on Wednesday and we've all been talking and thinking about her ever since. Yeah, she's That's never... not a word of a lie. Yeah. She brought so much joy and a very interesting story. And we welcome her back, Kay from Pascaval. Hello, Kay. Hi, Christy. Hi, Sammy. Hi. Oh. No, Sammy's, Sammy's not in. Sammy's no, not I'm there, here. is he? It's no. Me. Sam here. should be here. Sam should be here because you've got a big <laughs> thing for Sam. It's me, Sam Pang. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Got <laughs> Which you confess, but that's not why we're talking about you, Kay. You, no. you snuck into the conversation that you had, ch- that you'd left your husband Mm-hmm. and ho- hooked up or started a new long-term committed relationship with a woman later in life, and we bloody, we're bloody here for it, Kay. <laughs> we're here yeah. for it every day of the week, and we've all been talking about it. Yeah. Me and Vic had a 45-minute conversation about how excellent it was and how brave mm. to, to do it and and go against the expectations of society and your family and mm. live your dream. Mm. And we want to ask you about that time in your life and what happened and how you how you changed things. Yeah, I, well, very good questions, all of them, because, yeah, I, I'm still... I still look back at it and think, you know, that was, that was just such a big moment in time um, for me, Chrissy, and... So look, it was it was as I said, we were we had been friends for twenty years. In fact, I was just saying to Vic off here that she, um, Maggie, my partner, uh, was the witness at my wedding to oh. my husband. Um, so uh, did she love was, you then? Yeah, she did. Oh. She she had, unbeknownst to me, she had always um, carried a little torch for me, which I didn't actually know because I had been so well socialised, I think, into a uh, heteronormative world. But, but not only not only had I always thought, yeah, you know, I have to be with a guy because I was, you know, pressuring myself to be that way, I'd actually always been just attracted to men. Mm. And so even though I knew she was gay and um, I sort of was her shoulder through a lot of the relationships that uh, she went through, um, I had never actually felt an attraction to her uh, physically or, or sexually, and I certainly hadn't to other women up until um, the time that it happened, which is why it came as such a big surprise to me. So it was, it was. Um, so you were married and living yep. the heteronormative dream. I'm yep, assuming yep. kids, house, dog, mm. the whole. Uh, well, I wouldn't say I was li- living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> I think had I been living the dream, I probably still would be in that marriage. From the no, from was, the outside. From from the yeah, yes. from the outside and certainly in the beginning, but yeah, it went south very quickly and when it went south it went really south. Um What was the I catalyst went, for it going south? Were you just feeling that that 
you were living a lie or no, 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 nothing no, felt no. right? No. Well, well, yes, I was definitely living a lie. I was I was friends with that old Egyptian river, you know, denial. Um, and I was I was absolutely uh, aware. Jokes aren't funny, Kay. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you should have rolled that gear out for pain. <laughs> you should have rolled that out. Yeah. Um, no, I was I was definitely aware that things weren't good, but I was still trying to keep it all together. You know, yeah. sanctity of marriage and keeping it together for the kids. And yeah. uh, my parents were alive, and I know it would have caused them an enormous amount of um, grief had I have divorced. My my older brother divorced, and I know what heartache that caused. Absolutely, um, leaving a leaving a mum, marriage yeah. is a huge a huge yeah. decision to make. It is. It is massive. It's the the thing that I compare it to. What was going on in me, and it ended up leading to me having a um, kind of a. Um, it's not actually a heart attack as such, but it mimics a heart attack. It's called a taco suba, and a taco suba uh, is a, a, a kind of a, a thing that catches. Um, what are they called? Octopus or squid or something? The Japanese named it, and it's like this bulb type thing where the, the squid swims in to get the bait, then it can't get out because there's a bulb at the end. And that's mm. what happens to the heart. It kind of goes boom. Is and it like it an anxiety reaction? It's exactly an anxiety reaction, mm. which can happen, yeah, in people. And that's what that's what it caused me. It was these two big Titan values fighting. One was the sanctity of marriage, even though the, the marriage was dead and absolutely dead in the water and had been for several years. Um compared to being my authentic self because I had this moment where... And and wanting to be my authentic self for my daughter too. So, hello, Phoebe. I know you're listening. Um, So, my daughter, Phoebe, we only had one child and... How old uh, was she when this happened? She she was six when Mm -hmm. this happened. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah, she was the main reason I had stayed in the marriage. And um, But I started to see that, you know, a very unhappy mother and he was unhappy too um a very unhappy parents were Mm. not going to be a good thing for her but you know making the decision to kind of leave and split up her family Mm. uh that that in the end was um the thing that the hurdle i had to jump over the most because i was i I became clear to me that i was actually in love with maggie and um that happened in a kind of a a really odd way (laughs) because we we'd 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 been estranged for a little while uh, because she couldn't stand watching what was happening in my marriage. And um, but but the w- when she did recontact, there was a little bit of like she said something a little bit flirtatious. And I had this moment where I went, "Oh my god, I felt like a person." <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> exactly, Dino. Yes. So I felt like I'd been turned inside out, and then that was when the the, the big. Titan values started clashing. So I'm sorry, I'm rambling on a bit. No, I know. no it's so interesting, Can I Kay. In, Kay. And I'm so desperate to talk to friends and mm. stuff. Like, it's just great to hear a new awesome. story. Yeah. Mm. First of all, Kay, a taco suba ran third in the 986 cops bike. <laughs> uh, good horse. Good horse. Good. Hell of a run to come from the back of the field. I think, uh, oh. I think, I think Mick Dipman was riding it that day. Um, and also, uh, my, follow, my line of questioning... We'll go with this. Do you remember your first date? Um, well, we didn't really have a first date as such, Ooh. but I I remember I remember her uh, coming to the house and and we'd both kind of expressed our feelings for each other, and we were playing Scrabble and. There has never been a sexier game of Scrabble played in the history of the world. Can I tell you? We could. <laughs> I'm starting to take my clothes off, Kay. <laughs> oh, Brownie. She- you, you, she, might want to put your, you might want to put your clothes back on when you hear that she's actually a Bulldog supporter. Sorry, Brandy. Oh, Randy. no, you no. killed the mood now. So you're playing I've Scrabble. Gone, I've gone limp, Kay. You're playing Scrabble. You're the you to her cue. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Hey. <laughs> and um, did things get hot and heavy at that point or did it happen later? Um, yeah, things things got a little hot and heavy uh, How could at they that not point. Play in and, <laughs> and so what was that like, the first time that you kissed a woman? That would have been the very first time, I'm guessing. Yeah, totally weird. Look, that was the thing. Beforehand, I had to do 
I had to do. Like, I really did feel like I was being turned inside out. That's the only thing I can compare it to. Wow. That, Great feeling. Because all of my sexual feelings and fantasies had been about blokes. Yeah, yeah absolutely everyone. And um, and, and had it been a while since you'd had sex with anyone? Yeah, oh, that- yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Been been five years or something. So. It was, I had to kind of, every time I kind of tried to imagine me with her, I couldn't quite make it there. My head, even though I had these really strong feelings for her, I I absolutely couldn't imagine it happening without, you know, the dangly bit involved. Yes. So I just, it, 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 it. really took me, like I, as I said, I was, um, I had to process a bit of it myself. So I didn't know what was going to happen. Mm. I had no idea. But, you know, the bits work. The bits work regardless. Yes. Of, uh, it's good to know, Kat. Hey, I yeah. just love this story so much. Story. Yeah. I just love it. And I love that you use the word authentic because I think, you know, that's really important. And a lot of women... I don't know whether it's lockdown or what. I think a lot of women are going through that, like, who am I actually? Mm. So I yes. think your story, while we're all not going to run away and, Play you know, and, and hook up with our best friend. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I think there's Sweet. always something to, to be taken away. And thank you so much for sharing your story, Kay. Kay. I just loved it. I wish I was sitting at your next, table in Pasco Vale. I love you. The next time someone pulls out Scrabble, I'll be a little bit suspicious. You should. You'll be digging around in that little bag of tiles. <laughs> Thanks, Kay. Have a lovely day. Thank you. You guys too. Oh, before we go, can I ask one thing? Of course, Kay. My my friend Nadine, hello Nadine, I know you're listening too. Um, my friend Nadine said there was such a thing as a Sam Pang the Orchid t shirt. Yes, there is. There is, there is Kay, there. and all you've got to do is ask for it and you get one. Could I please have a t shirt of Sam Pang the Orchid? Please? Absolutely. What size do you want? We'll organise it immediately. Oh, uh, medium. Medium, perfect. You can wear it the next time you play Scrabble Cup. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to see what this looks like? Well, get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Good luck, hey. Yeah. Hey, what do you think? He's, uh, I like that. Um, yeah, quicker Lockie Neal update. I spoke yeah. to the club yesterday, Swanee, mm-hmm. so they're probably a little bit blindsided by the news. Uh, sure. They'd been out for dinner for Father's Day, a few of the, uh, the administrators. Mm-hmm. They get a late text from a WA journal, a late tweet from a WA journal saying Lockie Neal wants to go back to Fremantle. Of course, he's won the Brownlow medal at the Lions when he's got two years remaining on his contract, but yep. his wife, Jill, Jules, five weeks to go before she has a baby, a little girl. So he's requested that uh, he wants to go home. Fair obviously, enough. Jill, Jill's homesick. All the COVID issues have been a problem. Obviously, he hasn't been able to get home and see family and all these sorts of things. So, But... I would have thought, Swanee, that uh, the Lions will have to play hardball. So they understand compassionate reasons. Yes. So they'll, they'll, if he comes forward in a few days' time, so he didn't say, I want to trade. Yes. But he said, I need to think about it for a few days yeah. before I come back with an official answer. So most likely, Swanee, he'll, want to, he'll request a trade. Mm-hmm. And the club, I think, for compassionate reasons, will try and facilitate the trade. Sure. However... They'll want to be well. They'll want to be well compensated, Swanee. Yes. So if they're not well compensated, he'll just have to get his head around staying, and they'll have to put the support networks in place, mm. and hopefully they can put the family support okay. around. Her. Well, that, that's fair enough, isn't it, Swanee? Yeah, it is. I think it's if you sign a deal, you, you sign a deal. There's still, still two years to go. The club's got every right mm. to get full value back. Agreed. So as a, as a mother, even you would agree with that. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, God. I had five weeks off. So that's yeah. where it's at. Straight back at it. Right. Okay. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. The podcast. I was out for my walk yesterday, enjoying the sunshine, and I thought, not long now before I get reunited with Mr. Wonderful. <laughs> Very much. Good, ma- good morning, Melbourne. Samuel, I was thrilled to see you back in your Teddy Ruxpin waistcoat last night on Have You Been Paying Attention? It's been a long time between vests. Oh, it'll, be ye- it'll be years since I wore a vest on that show and I, I walked into years. the studio on, on Sunday and uh, Rachel in wardrobe said, how do you feel about the vest? I go, yeah, hi, Rachel, I've given up. So, yeah, mate, no worries, I'll wear it. Yeah. I don't care. Good on you. That's yeah, the sign of a broken man. It's, it's, it's almost, I almost wear it now for just the other panel <laughs> well, it's members. It's a plea for help. 
<laughs> I wear it for the other panel members to, you know, yeah. ha- to hang shit on me, yes. which, which they do, and sometimes it makes it. Why did you stop it. wearing it? You're a kind performer. I just, I don't know. I a just, generous performer. Oh, yeah, there was plenty, because once you wear the vest, there's the, the gags include, uh, you know, referring to me as a magician. Yes. Humphrey B. Bear. Humphrey B. Bear, mm. and uh, and I think there was one show Rove? where... Rove? There was, no, mm. did not Rove. There was did one, Rove like a, a waistcoat? I remember it? Rove rocking I, vests a I lot. I didn't know that. He would, it would look good on Rove. I, uh, the other one is that I reckon one... There was one show where either Mick or Marty threw their keys to me and said, mate, the, <laughs> can you just grab my car at the end? You know what I mean? So they're all oh in God. play. Oh, they're, all they're all in play. play. I wear it. Tell you who rocked a good vest. Who? The fat controller from Thomas. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Good, Jimmy. He filled it out. Absolutely. This is the Chrissy, Sam and Brownie podcast. Last night, a brownie on the couch, Tony. Yeah. Missed it. Sorry, big fella. Yeah, so you should be. Chris. What Chris. are you doing? Was it Chris? Chris. I'm playing Scrabble, where? It was. With Kay. Is it a... What does that mean? You knew you love her. You know what it means. Uh, she, well, she gave us a call just before 7 o'clock and she's in love with you. Well, good morning, Kay. She, and uh, she hooked up with her current partner over for the first time over a game of Scrabble and she said it was the hottest game of Scrabble ever. I imagine it was. Mm. But she was thinking about Hot. you the Nude entire time. Scrabble. Someone Nude was Scrabble. strip Scrabble. As I, as I said then, someone was digging around in the bag of tiles. <laughs> Looking for a triple word score. She was a U for her partner's Q. I like that. that was, <laughs> I'd You're never heard that saying this. before. I'd made it up, yeah, that's it why. it was a very good one. It's a Swanee original. Hey, I wrote it TM. You to her Q and I circled it. You to her Q. It's a couple of things that I learnt, Swanee, from the uh, show last night. Um, the one couch, is, or have you been paying attention? No, I didn't. I missed the couch. Yeah. I, I usually watch the couch. It's a big miss from me. Well, I watch it today. Watch it? Oh, oh, I was just busy, mate. Oh, yeah. It's busy. Doing Run what? jokes. Watching your own show. <laughs> no, I no, I don't do that. <laughs> God, I could. Uh, geez, I could mean good <laughs> no, form. You'd like best. it. You'd like it. It's a great show. Prince Harry. Yes. Has described they, they are heroes of the highest order. Oh. He has described the Oxford researchers who created the AstraZeneca vaccine. People people over here, by the way, should should know that AstraZeneca vaccine is the most used vaccine in the world. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's the most it? common one Australia in the world. Australia just lost their mind over Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. I would yeah. happily have the AZ. And they, guess what? It's manufactured here in Melbourne. I can't believe that. Who knows? It's a good tip. Who would have thought that? Mm. Well, Prince Harry's described them as they are heroes of the highest order, those Oxford researchers. Mm. Also described as heroes of the highest order, anyone who read Megan's book. (laughs) (laughs) There you go. Um, Her picture book. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is being rebooted. Did you know that? Will Smith in it? This is no, good well, news. no, no. He's the, oh. the the role of the Fresh Prince will be played by Jabari Parker, who I don't know who he is, but me, me neither. I'm sure he'll be good. Oh, here's one for you. If you watched anyone who watched the Last Dance, yes, yeah, which Michael is, Jordan. I think everyone in the world. Mm. Um, that was last lockdown. Yes, there was, was a, there was, was a, there was a very Tiger very King interesting five or ten minutes where during one of the finals that they played, and I know they played in. Well, this was they focused on the last one, but there was a little story about Dennis Rodman. <laughs> going on a 48-hour bender in Las Vegas during the 1998 finals. Yes. Of which, this is during the middle of the finals, Swanee. Yeah. So it's not a meaningless home and away season mm. where there's yeah. 82 games. Yeah. You could easily slip in a couple of days. Yeah. The finals had started. Yeah. <laughs> Rodman goes to the coach, so I, I need, 40, I need, I need 48, 20, 48 hours. hours. Yeah. Of, which, of which I think famously in that doco, Jordan tells, um, talks about it. Mm. He says, he, I told Phil Jackson... If, if he goes for 48 hours, there's no way we'll get him back. No. <laughs> <laughs> and then apparently Jordan had to go to Vegas and get, and get him. And Carmen Electra is hiding under the doona yes. as Rodman is, as Michael Jordan's trying to get Rodman to come back. To Great the team. times. Well, apparently there's going to be a movie about that, about that called, um, Called Forty Eight Hours in Vegas. Oh, oh that is fabulous! Great. Wouldn't you watch that? He was yes. crazy. Remember there was there was vision of him on the Harley Davidson motorcycle cruising around the city. Yeah. He would have been off his yes, head. Mate, Imagine great. that! Like Jordan would have flown in on his private jet. Yeah, just to pick him up. <laughs> right, That's great. Where are we going? We're off to the. Uh, I want you to know that I would do the same you. for any of you. Thank I would you. fly I want, in on my private jet. Make yeah. sure that our drink stand is full. The drinks trolley is full when we get back on. the I know plane. you would too. By the way, I would. But also in saying that. If it ever comes to it, mm. give us the whole 48. <laughs> don't, don't, be, don't be swinging in early. <laughs> Just me oh. waiting outside the room going, no, I've got, I'm going to give him three more hours. Thank you. Um, uh, the last one I just mentioned is some, there's some very sad news. The Melbourne star in the Docklands is to close immediately. 
after 15 years due to COVID travel restrictions and it's just, uh, it's gone it's downhill untenable. very quickly. What I want to know is are they going to dismantle it or will they just leave it there like when they retire a, a, a ship to a reef? Yeah. Mm. Surely they have to leave it Will there. it be the ghost Well, wheel? they've spent so much money rebuilding it because remember it had some cracks, unfortunate cracks in the early Absolutely. days. Absolutely. They went to a lot of effort yep. to rebuild it. And, it's part uh, of our skyline now, though. It is. It should be, I think Surely it should be left. But then it'll fall into disrepair. It'll be sad. First opened, like in, 2000, first opened in 2008, Swanee. Mm. 120 metre tall wheel called the Southern Star. It opened two years behind schedule. Then it closed a month later uh, due to some defects, including cracking. Did not open again until 2013. I remember that was a tough, had the five, same, tough hang, five years. Those ones. It was tough. <laughs> had the same PR company as AstraZeneca. Yeah, it did too. I just <laughs> never recovered. Because when you think of great tourist attractions around the world, Jermaine, there's the Eiffel Tower, there's the Coliseum. The London Eye. The London Eye. Mm. Um, and, of course, the, the Melbourne Star in Docklands. But I just wanted to mention in terms of tourist attractions that may not have captured the, the <laughs> imagination of a... Of a community or a country, the one, there's one in London at the moment called the Marble Arch Mound that has been labelled London's worst tour attr- tourist attraction. What on earth is that? It just looks like a tunnel. It's just a marble. There's a marble arch that's kind of covered in moss, and that is. Uh, but it's not the Marble Arch. The Marble no, no, Arch it's is not a the thing. Marble Arch. It's <laughs> the Marble Arch. Yeah, the Marble Arch is a thing. Where is the Marble just, Arch? The real one. It's in London, isn't it? Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, Somewhere this in one London. Here is, this one here has been described as London's worst tourist attraction. Jeez. I would agree. It looks um, like a, a ca- canteen where you get a takeaway coffee. Yeah, Someone exactly. Someone opens up the roller door. Yeah. Roll it up. So that's been labelled as London's worst tourist attraction. Just ahead of a couple other shockers, Swanee, there's the, uh, the Jimmy Savile Wishing Well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, well, no this, one goes to that, by the way. This is what you're doing. This what you're doing last night. Well, and it uh, makes uh, makes sense. Now. That's course, all coming together. Of course, Prince Andrew's um, children's playground in Sheffield, <laughs> where he used to take his <laughs> girlfriends. So, listen, <laughs> I've got. I will the, never tire of Prince Andrew <laughs> jokes. Ever. Anyway, the Melbourne star, Valet. We hardly knew you. Do you want to see what this looks like? We'll get the visuals on Instagram. Follow Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. So everyone's watching this Jeremy Clarkson farm show. It's called Clarkson's Farm. Has everyone heard yeah, of it? Yeah, been watching it. Everyone's loving it. Jackie Brown, yeah. 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 So it's Jeremy, on Amazon Prime. Jeremy Clark- it is on Amazon Prime. And Jeremy Clarkson, who is famous for Top Gear and other things, but yeah, t- Top mainly Gear top mainly, gear. Um, he's bought this farm. He doesn't know anything about farming and uh, the show is about him learning how to become a farmer. That's right. And to get this farm sort of viable. A fully functional farm that yeah. actually makes money. Working farm. Working a working farm. farm. Yeah, well, he's had it for and a he's, he's got, got no few, idea. He's had it for a few years, but he thought it's, it's about, I think it's over a 1,000 acres. So Ooh. it's a big farm. Swan. It's a big farm and he's got no idea. So hijinks ensues. It's called Diddly Squat Farm. Is that right? I think so. Yeah, I think, I think so. so. Yeah, and then, it, oh, there it is, Diddly Squat. Yes, Diddly I, Squat Farm Shop. And no idea, as in the first thing he buys, Swanee, not to give away the storyline, but first thing he buys is a Lamborghini tractor. Yes, yes. The ducks nuts of tractors, <laughs> and this thing is so big that it doesn't fit in his machinery shed. He goes to put <laughs> rookie goes error. To, idiot. He goes to drive in the shed, and it can't fit. It's the ducks nuts. Well, the ducks nuts. It is the right. ducks nuts. And the speaking nuts of tractors and nuts, yes. People are sneaking in to Jeremy Clarkson's farm when it's closed. Ah, no. And doing the business ah. on the tractor. <laughs> what? Yes, it has become a swingers hot spot. Hot. Where sort of underground notices are going out going, we'll meet you at the tractor. Oh, I like that. <laughs> they say apparently there's no security on Diddley Squat Farm and um, swingers can meet there... <laughs> To do their business, and they're doing it in the sheds and on the tractor. That's one of the hot spots, the tractor. Well, the tractor looks very comfortable. You can easily do it in a <laughs> tractor. It's, the Lamb- it's a Lamborghini. This is the Duck Nuts one. The Duck Nuts. Yeah, that's the that's Duck tractors. Nuts one. And, you have uh, a, um, because you know you, you're originally, of course, country boy. I mean, yeah. You, you and your hillbilly mates down there. When you were young, <laughs> did you ever? Uh, you know, did you have ever have sex uh, in a tractor? No, I was going to say just you know a little gen- gentle petting. Rolling, <laughs> rolling the hay. 
Gentle slash heavy petting? Uh, no, I wouldn't have thought so. No, no, never done it on a tractor. So, Unfortunately, yeah, you haven't lived. Boring. Lived, yeah. are, you really boring. A country, are you really a country boy? Well, the old Massey Fergusons were just not as comfortable. Oh, uh, the old Massey. Oh, Massey Ferguson, not yeah. a caterpillar guy. No, no, Massey no. Ferguson. Massey Ferguson, only the best. <laughs> um, <laughs> just saying words now. <laughs> it reminds me of the time that I went to a house dedicated to swingers. When? What? what? Big Brother right. House? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Master Chef House, no. <laughs> um, so back in my previous life, yeah. I wrote copy for real estate. Yes. So that means that I would go into houses that were going to be sold and write the board and all the advertising, right? You Everything. Mean, you're not the original, re- this is a renovator's dream, are you? Yes, I am. I was the first person in Victoria to have their own copywriting business for the real estate industry. Anyway. Um, went to this big house in Canterbury. Big house. Mm. Huge. Many bedrooms, each Ooh. with a bed in them, including the living room. What? Oh, my God. Beds it's in, a bit sus. Beds everywhere. Yeah, okay. Sus as you like, right? That, that, that's the red light, is it? That's well, the there light, were, but... no, I tell you what the light, the red light is, no light bulbs. Ah. No light bulbs Wait, in why? any of the fittings. Wow. Why? Oh. Because it's got to be dark in there. Ah, yes. What's the point in having a light bulb when you're not turning on any lights? Only lamp light. Did you, uh, how did you ride that up? Oh, well, I just. So they were selling it? Yeah, they were selling it, but I obviously didn't focus on its ability to be repurposed STCA you know, the last as, time. A, as a swinger's paradise. Really? It would have been were... interesting, made for an interesting open house. How many spas? Oh. Four. What? Whoa! <laughs> That's a lot. And a plaque out the front that had been torn off that in German was adult Platz, which is like, um, you know, grown-up market. Really? <laughs> and I stole that and I still have it. Oh, my God. So, you, know, last, you know, the last time I was over at Brownies, I noticed there were no light bulbs in there. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's the dead giveaway. That so is there amazing. you go. And a Scrabble board. <laughs> so many beds, lots of Scrabble boards, well, four you. spas. Four spas. Come on now. Like, come on. One outside and three so, inside. Okay, what's the, um, is that, uh, is that house still running? <laughs> Are they still running? You, put your pen you, down. I'll give you the address. Down. You're not going to buy it. Nova. Chrissy Swan, Sam Pang, and Jonathan Brown. Chrissy's celebrity stuff. Reports are coming in that Nicole Kidman has stormed off the set of expats in Hong Kong. But you've got to say, reports are coming in thick and fast. Thick and fast. I like that. The 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 teledex is going off. Is that what oh, teletext? Jeez. <laughs> but apparently, it is not true. <laughs> so. <Okay. laughs> Good news, bad news. It's quite a ride. <laughs> Amazon is uh, responding to the dramatic <laughs> reports. Listen, they said, mm? take a chill pill. Amazon said that? Yeah. Nicole wrapped as scheduled. She did not leave early. So just relax, Max. <laughs> she always had other projects she was committed to because things aren't good at home. Oh. I'm just making this up. Yeah, oh, like well, that was news to me. <laughs> My God, have you ever known a woman to work more than Nicole Kidman? She likes working. She loves working. <laughs> yeah. She's going to get in the house at the well, moment. Imagine her being she, at home. What's she, she talking about? Lockdown. What's she talking about if she's at home? She might be my. Is. She might be my spirit animal. <laughs> the production is not stalled or on a hiatus. They said it was always going to continue shooting without us. So stop the bullshit. Stop the bullshit. Oh wow. Cardi B's had a baby baby too, by the way. Oh, yes. Congrats, Cardi B. I heard that on the way here this morning. Yeah, little boy. This is the Chrissy, Sam and Brownie podcast. David Campbell. You may see him in a couple of hours on Today Extra. Or you might have heard him on Smooth FM, our sister station. Or you may have heard his last ten studio albums. But now he's got an eleventh, and it's called Saturday Sessions. And it's out now. Here's David Campbell. Welcome to the show, David Campbell, vegan and alcohol-free extraordinaire. Uh, so far this morning, so good. Yes, yeah, particularly because I'm driving to work, so that's good. Um, <laughs> look, I don't. I, I've been. I've looked up the uh, track listing of your new album, the Saturday Sessions. Yeah. Uh, the she on the album is that the Elvis Costello she? Yeah, 
Yeah, it is. The Charles Aznavour song? Yeah. Why didn't you choose Every Day I Write the Book, which is unarguably Elvis Costello's best song? I agree with you that because that is uh, but Charles Aznavour wrote She. Elvis covered it for Notting Hill, I think. Is yes. that from the movie Notting Hill? Yes. Which is also not as good as Four Weddings and a Funeral, in my wife's opinion. Very controversial. That is controversial. Your wife's wrong, yeah. mate. Ah, uh, look, you know, the household is divided sometimes. You know what I mean? It keeps the friction going. <laughs> oh, Notting Hill is a great film. That is a big question, though. That could be about Brownie's Big Brown yeah, Pair. Yeah, hold on. Have you seen it's, them, a, but... it's a really important... I think it's important. I think there are merits for both, but she might be right on Four Weddings. I haven't seen it for a long, long time, though. Well, yeah, it's know, been a while. We if need you to know my it. views on uh, Notting Hill, Jonathan. Mm. Uh, yeah, one, one of the greats. Yeah. Right up there with the bodyguard. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Right okay. up there. Is that good or bad? That's good, That's David. Good. That's good. Yeah, I love the bodyguard. It's yeah. an absolute banger. Yeah, thank you. Sam watched it twice after he had a bad breakdown with a yeah. former girlfriend of his. He was in depression, so he watched it twice. Well, you want someone to save you. I 100% agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I was um, looking for my Frank Farmer. <laughs> That's exactly right. It never came to <laughs> Hey, what's happening with the facial hair, mate? We're loving the facial hair. I, 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 it was laziness uh, during COVID, and then it just sort of people were like, it looks all right. And I went, ah, oh, well, we'll just try it. And as long as it doesn't bother, it bothers my kids, but it doesn't bother my wife. So that's all that matters. Um, how is it going at home with so many kids under, you know, what? How old's Leo now? 10? My Leo, yeah, my Leo's 11. 11. How old's your Leo? 12. 12, yeah. So we're about a year apart. So he's 11, and the twins are six and a half. We're having a good week. I'll say it's a good week. Um, and that's out of 10. So that's okay um, that we've been in lockdown. I know you guys have been there longer, but it's, it's okay. It's fine. I mean, I'm glad that they are at the ages that they are at. That means that, you know, my Leo is much better at doing, like, Zooms and virtual stuff. He's now across it after last year. Yeah. Uh, the twins, you know, they're still a bit ADD, and it's still two of them. So whatever the teachers go... Let's just bake something today. You have to bake two mm. sets of everything. It's just a bit of a nightmare. It says here you are doing homeschooling. Now, there may be whiskers all over this story because if you're on your way to work now, and it's 7.45, you're on air yeah. from 9 till 12. Oh, I presume uh, you have a post-show meeting. <laughs> and then by the time you drive home, you're probably not getting home until school's finished, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good look. It's, I'm getting close. I don't get the big chunk. I get lunchtime, so I have to cover lunch and post lunch, which for the twins is like, do you want to read a book? Yeah, do you yes. want to? <laughs> do you want to not have screen time and go outside and kick the footy for a bit? That's good exercise. I get PE yeah. and I get a bit of reading. Mate, <laughs> mate, David's doing. He's doing. It's homeschooling. He's doing school pickup at the end. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what you seem to be doing. My old school homeschooling. The hero shift. Now, David, your um, your dancing on TikTok just brings so much joy. Where did you learn to dance so well, or is it just in I, your I just, bones? It's. Please stop talking about my bones this time in the morning. But I, um, I really, I, I just picked it up from doing musicals and stuff. But it's for Linda Russell, who's my co-host. She and her daughters are all dancers, so she's the ones like every Friday we have the dance. I'm like, okay, and so she teaches me to dance, and I'm just lucky that I can. I don't have two fu fully left feet that I can get it really quickly. Um, but she's a perfectionist. She's like, we have to get it right, and I'm like, nah, three takes and we're done. So it's a good combo. You're both so good. I can't mm. even do the grapevine. I remember I went to an aerobics class in the 80s and I fell over, uh, properly over, trying to do the grapevine. Yeah, those pump classes can really hurt somebody. <laughs> it's really, 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 so, really, so really easy to pump class. You have to forgive us, David, by the way. You're wearing a North Face jacket. It's, just, it's triggering down here. We think you're going to give so us the sorry, yeah. cases, you know what I mean? So <laughs> just... Um, did notice you, that. You, 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 <laughs> I thought North Face was positive, Sam. I'm so sorry. Uh, I, I love it. I love North Face. By the way, David, I just wanted to know, it's obviously 11th album, congratulations. I wanted Thank to you. let you know if you, I uh, wanted to see if you knew about um, a fan of DJ Tiesto who last who passed away last week and one of his wishes was to have his ashes fired out of a cannon to DJ Tiesto's Adagio Strings. at a music festival last week and I just wanted you to say because you know people don't know that we're you know I'm a big fan and I've actually got it in my will that when I pass <laughs> probably this week at the way things are going my ashes will be fired out of a cannon to one of your songs yes 
the most wonderful time of the year. Can you imagine that, Brownie? <laughs> It'd be brilliant. You'd be lighting the cannon too, by the way. You're there. You've got official role on the day. I love the choice of song. I'll have the black armband on. <laughs> Thank you. How would you go? Would you be able to concentrate on the lyrics with uh, Sam's ashes all over you? All over you the Wait a second. What do you mean all over me? It's, it's the cannon being fired into my face. <laughs> Sadly, yes. That's but that's yes. part of the deal. <laughs> and you're there. I like that you're there singing it live too. That's a real commitment. Yeah, I'm live. Yeah, yeah, I'm live on this gig. Hi. Anyway, just listen. I'm in entertainment. It's good to know that I've just booked a gig, guys. It's been a long time. <laughs> hey, the Eleven Studio album, the Saturday Sessions, is out now. I guess we're done, David Campbell. I guess it's time to wrap up the uh, the old. Uh, Rick, um, well, do you want me to sing your song on the way out? Yes. Oh, yes. All right, cool. I know your eyes in the morning sun. I feel you touch me in the pouring rain. Think about this for the cannon. Yeah. And the moment <laughs> that you wander far from me, I'm gonna feel you in my arms again. Come on. Me out of summer breeze, give me one and another. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Uh, Saturday, Friday and Saturday nights when I'm driving home from work after calling the footy or presenting the football, mm-hmm. listen to 3OW, of course, and we love listening to Rex Hunt. We do. Uh, oh, well, he's we finished, did. hasn't he? We did. On footy nightline, mm. 3OW, it was just magnificent. The calls that he, he would bring to the table were great. Rexy's commentary, great. His opinions, great. Yeah. Except this happened, and this is the last time we heard him a few weeks ago. Why do I steam... <laughs> because you're losing the very feel of what 3AW was built up from Norman Banks and Harry Beitzel and some other fish kissing idiot. I'll drop it now, but don't ring during my program. Oh. Got it? <laughs> yeah, it might be me last night because I feel good and I don't need people telling me to shut up. Because I'll take you, I'll take you where millions of people go, and you will never come back from it. And if I have to worry about lightweights after me building the foundation for most of you people, I'll just go fishing. I mean, Jeezy was angry, angry. It was angry. One of, the, one of the producers rang up. Uh, during the program and said, Rexy, you've missed the uh, ad break. Yeah. It's important. <laughs> missed an ad break because he was interviewing D- D- Robert Dippy at Domenico, Dipper, oh. which, you know, so it's it's like trying to hurt a wild a wild Brumby. Yes. It can be hard. So you can understand that he's missed an ad break and then the producer rings up and says, Rexy, hey, you missed the ad break. Yes. How do you reckon that producer go on this show? Jeez, he'd be, oh, he'd geez. be have a hotline. Yeah, he'd be, be ringing Craig frequently, Moore. Christine. <laughs> so he's been replaced by Brad Hardy, former Brown Low medalist. Uh, he's been on 6PR Perth Radio for a long time. Well, now Brad's doing the Melbourne Nightline shift as well. Really? On Saturday night. And this is um, the sort of content <laughs> you can get. <laughs> I'm driving home, and this is the first thing I hear from a listener who's not ringing up to necessarily check the footy results. <laughs> he wants to check some other results. Hello, Eddie. Hello. How are you, Eddie? Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, I've got the numbers, please. I need the. I'm going to bed right now. I need the numbers. Thank you. Oh, you, you need the, the you need the Tats Lotto numbers. <laughs> no, no, I need the numbers here. The Tats the draw tonight. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Hurry up and give it to me. <laughs> That's not our number. So far. He's on live on the radio. Live on the radio. I love that so much. He's <laughs> rang the wrong number. He's rang the wrong number. But no, I think he's rang the right number. I was going to say, I was going to read out some of the best players for the Bulldogs, but I'll give you the real ones. Uh, <laughs> oh, you. Eric, you got a pen there? You ready, Eddie? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready for you. Okay, 29. <laughs> 29. <laughs> You're 33, joking. 33. 14. Sorry? 14. <laughs> One four, one four, fourteen. Uh, do we get the supplementaries? Oh, 14, no, sorry. Yeah, forty-five, four five. Yeah, four five. Yeah, four five. Thirty-one, three one. Three one, yes. Forty-four. <laughs> four Forty-four. Four. You're joking. The supplementaries are twenty-six. <laughs> yes. And nineteen. <laughs> that is unbelievable. I've had to pull the car over. Oh, I've had to pull the car over and just make a note in my phone. I was wetting myself. This is unbelievable. That. Hey, he wasn't finished. Eddie wasn't finished. You're joking. Can I read them back to you, please, Brad? Yes. 
Yeah, 29, 33, 14, that is 1, 4, mm -hmm. 45, 31, 44, and the subs are 26 and 19. Uh, that right? Oh, you're absolutely outstanding, Eddie. That's it, I hope you got them. Well, thank you, my friend. You're, oh, you're the best. Thank you. You're a real gentleman. Good on you, mate. <laughs> You know what? You know what Brad? You know what Brad Hardy should do? Was that on Saturday night? Saturday night. Brad Hardy should he should get Eddie to deliver the Tatslotto numbers every Saturday night. Yes. If Eddie's so, awake, you could ring up Eddie, give absolutely. him the numbers, and say, Eddie, can you read these out? And just so everyone, that's a community service announcement for those listeners. Correct. Well, let's get Brad Hardy on the phone. Yes. And we'll propose well, that to him. Yeah, just on Wednesday night after the Powerball. Just give him the, give it, Brad Hardy <laughs> to give the Powerball numbers. That's what we need. Brownie, the podcast. Well, good morning to you. It's only Tuesday. Can you believe it? What? God, Is this it? year's dragging on. It's only Tuesday. It's only Tuesday, but it's a beautiful day outside. Um, we, so we, it's a win. What it's are you a doing win. Today, Swanee? I'm going for a walk. Yep. Um, having a coffee at Pacino. Beautiful. Um, that's about it. That's all. What? That's my only plan. What are you, John? What about uh, you, Big John? Well, me and Dan are going to do the podcast. Oh, Brownie's podcast. Oh. Ever heard of it? Yeah, I have. have heard <laughs> yeah, of it. Yeah, we have. And this then, uh, out, out strategy. That's why you're getting out. That is the out strategy. <laughs> and I've got TV. My TV out strategy is uh, 360 tonight with Jared Wayne. Whoa! Well, that's a big day. You're big doing day. radio. A podcast and then television tonight. You don't seem to be home very much. Why? Why is that? Oh. <laughs> why? Why is I'm, that? I'm still homeschooling. Like David Campbell. <laughs> yeah, like Campbell. <laughs> Campbell gets home at two in the afternoon. Yeah, I'm still yes. homeschooling. No, you're not, mate. No, very no, mate. Very you strategic. See, I would have thought. So hey, so yes. you and Jer you, last week you you and Jared Waitley doing three sixty. Yes. Like, well, a, I'm doing it because just, Gary's stuck in a hotel room. Gary Lyon is in Perth. He's got three days to go. Yeah. It's a pain in the ass. I know. But I'm a company man, as you. And what did you learn from last week? Because you know, just as someone, Daniel and I watched it, and yeah, uh, yeah man, it wasn't it wasn't great. <laughs> so what are you going to do differently this week? What are you going to do differently? Yeah, what have you learned from um, last time? Well, so, yeah. What's your on your SWOT analysis? Maybe not turn up. Yeah. Yes. No yeah, show. They're ringing sick. No, no, but, no, then, no I, but then you have to be at home. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, good point. That. No, I enjoyed it. It's good fun. With Jerry, no, I'm sure you Jerry enjoyed it. Professional. What about the viewers? <laughs> what are you going to do? And what are you going to do to actually, you know, make well, it? Well, I was reliably informed there was the highest rating 360 for the oh! year. Oh! Stay down, <laughs> Sam. <laughs> what yeah. time make it? You too. backed him into that Whoa. corner. You take it. Yeah. If you. Samuel, yeah, son of a bitch. if you come for the king, you best <laughs> not miss. Oh, wow. Astonishing. Whoa. Uh, hey, someone had to say it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I'm glad, <laughs> glad it was you. This is the Chrissy Sam and Brownie podcast. The king himself, Tony Martin. Tony Martin, welcome. Oh, good morning. Do I sound clearer? I've gone over to the MBN. <laughs> what? You do sound, you were starting to be frazzled last week. Uh, yeah, well, I've since uh, updated. I'm still on a landline, but it's on the MBN, so I'm assuming that will mean a lot of my uh, references will be more up to date. Of course. You, uh, Tone, how did you take the news that landlines will be discontinued from 2025 onwards? Mm. Well, I'm just going to have to communicate via the facts from then on, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good to be you. Yes, so many more modern references. Did I hear, Sam, did I hear you say you want to be shot out of a cannon? Is that right? <laughs> yeah, well, well. Burnt first, cremated. Yeah, cremated, and then shot out of a cannon because of a fan last week at a, a, a DJ Tiesto, is a, a fan of his. That was his final wish tone, and... um. Uh, he got it. Know, and he got it at a fest, at a music festival. So, yeah, well, we, nice. I remember 20 years ago on radio, I did a comedy sketch called uh, Ringling Brothers Funerals, which was a service that would fire your body out of a cannon. <laughs> and that's now become uh, quite popular. The <laughs> famous author Hunter S. Thompson, of course, was famously had his ashes shot out of a cannon and it was all funded by Johnny Depp. But did I hear you say that uh, you wanted to be accompanied by a David Campbell song? Yeah, well, we, we were speaking of David Campbell, so I just thought I'd, you know, that's a, the, the, the I'd be dead, the whole, the you know, the, the church is full or whatever, the cannon goes yeah. off. 
It's the most wonderful yeah, time. Yeah, I can hear that. That's pretty good. I thought you might have gone with his final musical moment, which was, of course, on Channel 9's New Year's Eve broadcast a couple of years back when he sang Goody Two Shoes by Adam Ant. Yes, that was amazing. <laughs> I remember it very, very well. One of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. You don't drink, don't smoke, what do you do? I remember it. Wow. When was it? Very strange. But look, yes, I am coping. I, I did sound a bit crazy last week, and it's it's lockdown madness around here. I just sit at the computer refreshing the exposure sites uh, <laughs> website every 25 seconds. And I don't know if you've been there today, but uh, they've misspelled. I don't know if they've misspelled it deliberately to sort of stereotype the locals of East Brunswick, but it's spelled East Brunswick. Hey, Cotter. <laughs> <Cotter. laughs> Fortescray. So hello to everyone listening in Brunswick, but you are an exposure site, I should tell you. <laughs> okay, good to know. Oh, no. you, Very so, good to know. What did you think about the uh, the opposite, the Melbourne Star closing down after 15 years? That great landmark. Oh, well, I, I notice they are blaming it on COVID, but I, things were looking bad for the eight years before COVID, <laughs> weren't they? I think so, Tony. I think it's a very convenient excuse. And what Bless was it? them. It was just cursed or something. It just no. did not yeah. work, did it? No, it's, it was almost as sad as when Dracula's closed down. It's really... <laughs> we're down to just two. Hey, speaking of things from the old days, here's something that amused me. I've been uh, to research my... Uh, podcast, Sizzletown. I've been listening to a bit of talkback radio and I was <laughs> I was flipping around last week and I don't know what station it was but this was the topic they were doing. So call us in if you've got an example of something that used to be cheaper in the old days. <laughs> <laughs> Literally everything. <laughs> and exactly anything. <laughs> but uh, electricity, you know, you just call in with anything. Anything. We're going to take your Shoes. calls. Take your calls for the next 6 hours. <laughs> but I the think, best uh, one I think with Christian the guys O'Connell's that... doing that over in the others. <laughs> get on board, guys. Things were cheaper apparently. But, um, yeah, they had a guy call in and he <laughs> said, this is what he says, going, uh, listen, I, uh, I'd just like to tell you, um, uh, in the old days you could get uh, two potato cakes for 20 cents. <laughs> <laughs> and then he thought about it, he's gone, hang on, no, hang on a second. No, actually, I think it was three potato cakes. <laughs> and <laughs> he just... He just talked about potato cakes for seven minutes. Can I tell you, sometimes I listen to 3AW for that reason and I always get a laugh. I heard a guy last week who did a full monologue on, and they let them go, see, yeah. because the longer they talk, the less the announcers have to. Yeah. So yeah. this guy this guy spoke for six minutes about how much effort he puts into picking his stats lotto numbers. <laughs> a blow-by-blow account of how long it takes him. It takes him all week. So he's like, so on a Monday I might do a couple of numbers and then on the Tuesday I'd change it. I'd change it because it doesn't have to be until Friday at 6 o'clock. <laughs> and you can almost feel the announcers are just like making a coffee, yeah. organising yeah. their bag, whatever, because Reg What's from... It's like he's doing a form going on the horses. Yeah. <laughs> it was Imagine about, about his numbers, but he never never revealed any of his numbers, you know. Ah, right. But if he does win, he will be able to buy... So many potato cakes. <laughs> oh, um, that is exactly right. So but many. When I, uh, ever since I heard that guy, I've had a similar character call in Sizzletown, and uh, I've just got an example. He was initially complaining about me not uh, answering any questions on have you been paying attention. I think you've got the clip there, Dino. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I saw you on uh Thank God you're paying attention, so right? Have you been yeah, well, paying attention? Yes, that, okay, that was me. Okay, what are you on there for anyway? Uh, I don't even know what show you're on. Well, I'm on this one. You're not on maths or anything, are you? No, no, I'm not. Well, I should have some different people on, shouldn't they? <laughs> yeah, like who? Oh, what about Chopper? Who? Chopper Reed. <laughs> Chopper? They should be on. Yeah, yeah but yeah, I, I think so. don't think he's available. Well, no, um, no, I think I'd... It's Heath Chopper's... Who? Heath Franklin's Chopper. Uh, Heath Franklin's... Yeah, that's it. Chopper, yeah, but he's, yeah, not, he's not the real Chopper. What? Um, no. <laughs> Haven't you seen the film? 
he's a film, mate. I've seen the film. It's with Eric Banner. Yeah, but he's playing. No, you do. Heath the, Franklin is the, the actual chopper. No, <laughs> no, he's doing an impression. He's not the real You're chopper. You're not talking about the yeah. underbelly one. The underbelly one? It's not the real chopper. No. He, you, no. You've confused your <sighs> choppers there, mate. Yeah, but they're what? all based on the original the original on. chopper, the, the real he's one. He's he, There's like four choppers now, is he? Oh, God. There's only one yeah. chopper, mate. All right, well, yeah. thanks for calling. Okay. Just see you. <laughs> <laughs> Curated <laughs> from what I've been hearing. There's only one chopper, mate. There's only one. <laughs> it's Heath Franklin. Hey. <laughs> Chrissy, Sam, and Brownie. Our friend Tony Martin. Listen to Sizzle Town as well. Tone, oh, it's wonderful to uh, speak to you every week. Just um, can't wait to be back in the studio. But what have you been doing to entertain yourself in the fun bunker? Well, we haven't been doing any Nadia Bartel action, if that's what you're about to ask. There's been there's been no ladies bring a plate uh, activity around here. Uh, I notice I'm very confused. Obviously, not having a mobile phone, I'm really confused about how you um, accidentally upload a piece of footage like that to the. Is it easy? Have you done one of those, Chrissy? No, no, I Apparently have it not. Is though. It sort of is, Stone. Apparently, it's, it's, you know, you're the man. Go on. It sort of is. So, like, if you're going to upload a story and you just pick the wrong square, right. it takes a second to realise your stuff's up, then then it's up there for as long as you t- takes to delete it. Delete it. That and before sense. you know it, you're, you're in the Daily Mail. I didn't get into the Daily Mail with the one I talked about on this show a few weeks back where my cat walked across <laughs> my keyboard and accidentally sent the phrase... VB to all of my Bandcamp followers. Yeah. Yeah, that I was really hoping yeah. that would get me some action. It wasn't why as big was a scandal, it? No, was it? I don't understand wasn't why. that the same level? That's not fair, T. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like I was recommending. Hey, everyone, let's have a VB. <laughs> Well, no, 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 did you not get a sponsorship out of that, Tony? I could have got you <laughs> over to my boys, Carlton, uh, Carlton United Breweries. Well, the cat's playing hardball, so I'm not sure if uh, he's going to be available. It's a double. But I've been, I've been on the TV, you know, watching a lot of TV like everyone. What we do is we, we flip around the channels and a girlfriend insists we never stop on that ad that, I don't know what it's for, well, it's for sort of wearing a mask, I think, that shows a bloke sneezing in slow motion. Have you seen that one? No, yes. I haven't. Yuck. I, I all like here from the other end of the house is the girlfriend going, oh, no, the droplets guy again. Oh, droplets, <laughs> droplets yuck. <laughs> don't want to see the droplets guy. But I've been looking for entertainment on, uh, on the TV, and uh, what we like to do is, and it's, the equivalent during lockdown of pornography for us is seeing a scene in a movie set in a restaurant. Isn't that exciting? Yes, that. it is. It is so oh, exciting. There's that show with Michael Douglas uh, called The Kaminsky Method on mm. Netflix, and they regularly visit this sort of Beverly Hills Hollywood restaurant with, like, leather sort of banquet-style, uh, you know, booths that you can sit in and someone brings you a steak and then a, and an old tottering waiter comes over with a, a traditional cocktail on a tray. It's just, we just sit there drooling at the screen going, remember that? Remember waiters? Oh, I funny, know. I, I, you can't wait, can you? Just I flip, cannot wait. Oh, my, what a time it's yep. going to be on the other side of this. Oh. If they can survive and get yeah. through it, there'll be a big upturn, especially oh, going look, into the good people, weather. Just people bringing you things. Wouldn't remember that? Wasn't that great? Absolutely. Did I hear, Tone? Did I hear that uh, a couple of was it movie producers or guys that had done really well over in America? Uh, the cafe that was in Heat was going to go under. The cafe or restaurant in that famous scene between Pacino and uh, De Niro uh, was going to yeah. go under. So they bought it to keep Ooh. it running. Wow. Well, yeah, I haven't uh, haven't heard about that. I've, I'm looking for, for exciting movie news here. It's, it's very alarming, actually. Nicolas Cage has not announced a new film in the last week. Uh, is it, do you think perhaps he's got COVID? Is something wrong with him? What's going on? Uh, ben Affleck has announced a sequel to The Accountant. Ooh, I don't know whether... Sick. The, that people really want... I didn't see the account. No. I can't imagine what happens in this one. This time he's calculating the GST. I don't know what the account <laughs> going to be up to. But more bizarrely, our friend Jason Statham has just announced his latest film, The Beekeeper. What? Whoa. That sounds That's big. That's right. This time 
I'm keeping the bees. <laughs> <laughs> do you know I don't know what he's going to be doing as a beekeeper, but <laughs> I can't wait. You don't got no inf- more information about that movie, but he's, he's pl- no, Jason Statham playing a beekeeper. That's all it says. Uh, signs for new action thriller, The Beekeeper. Can't wait. No, well, we, we watched the Megalodon the other day with the kids, Tone. They loved it. Isn't it great when he says Megalodon? It, it takes him a couple of goes to get it right. It does, too. Me- Megalo- oh. Megalodon. <laughs> I look forward to that, by the way. Yeah, the, the mythology of beekeeping is something that I've always been interested <laughs> in, and I'm sure that the masses will flock. Hey, Tone. <laughs> Just because you, yeah. you do a great Jason Statham, and he, oh. he, he is in the news, mm. and it's been a while, by the way, since since you have read oh. you have read from Jonathan Brown's book. Uh, oh, I'm going to have to oh. have to grab it. I'll have to find What's it. What's it called yeah. again, Brown? Jonathan Brown, Life and Football. Life and Football. Random page. Random page. Uh, all right, about. so you got. I've got it here. Life and Football. If you just choose, because oh, I funny. do believe it, it, that it sounds better when read by Jason Statham. I that's agree. The theory. Absolutely. What about around one ninety? Page one. 190. Wow, you, it is amazing that it goes up that high, but it does. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Tone. You're right. Page, You're in my prime. Page one hundred and ninety. It's just a picture. Jonathan Brown holding up some kind of trophy. <laughs> some oh. kind of trophy. Two fifty. Two fifty. Uh, Two fifty. All right. Here oh, we go. This is great. Will it be a picture? <laughs> Another picture. Uh, <laughs> a lot of pictures. All right. Pay, okay. Here we go. Okay. In hindsight. I think Lee had been pondering his future in the days before that match committee meeting. After ten seasons at the helm. He had become tired and fatigued, which was completely understandable. (laughs) Coaching an AFL team is an all-consuming job. Not many coaches last more than five years, let alone ten. The Lions' entire football program had become a bit tired at that time. When Lee was in his prime as a coach, we were winning premierships year after year. We'd been given the best of everything. But the club now was in a tricky financial situation. <laughs> <laughs> that's so and fantastic. Oh. That's, uh, that's Tony Martin reading oh. as Jason Statham the, the end of Lee Matthews' tenure in Brisbane Lions. Is that what I just heard? <laughs> yeah, that correct. Is Listen to Sizzle Town. <laughs> You're just going to love it if you've never heard it. Uh, it's a fake radio show. Tony does all the parts. We love you, Tony. Uh, yeah, so in the latest uh, in the latest episode, a character that uh, originated on this show, Barry Football, uh, oh. apologises for his racist attack on me. <laughs> Fantastic. Can't wait, Can't wait Tony. Ever wondered what happens in the studio? Check out Chrissy, Sam and Brownie on Instagram. One man. Many questions. Are we born right-handed or are we made right-handed? Why do you get a freeze brain when you eat or drink something cold and not a freeze throat or freeze stomach? On Fox Footy, how is the pressure gauge calculated? I love that. All the answers. I run on me face. Ask Brownie. I've got one that my daughter's been asking, but I might save it for next week. I think we've got enough for this week. I might get her to actually call. Nice. Yeah. I'll, okay. I'll save yeah, it. We'll yeah. She's I'll been just, asking me. I'll yeah. get us. I'll get us. I'll get you warmed up. Yes. Okay. Fire yeah. up. Formula One driver Lewis Hamilton had a very very big fan who chartered a plane to fly a supportive message over uh, the the Dutch Grand Prix last week. What is the greatest level of fandom that you've ever received? That's John? amazing. That amazing. is amazing, isn't it? Um. Well, there's a fellow, I think his name was Rob. He's a big Fitzroy fan slash Brisbane fan. Uh, so he had all the, uh, he tattoos, Swanee, all mm-hmm. in his upper body. You know, he had the big Fitzroy emblem, the FFC emblem. That already is a huge feat of dedication. Pretty amazing. And then he had a big montage, not montage, uh, like a, what would you call it? Is it a monta- a, a, a yeah, photo? Yeah, collage, I mean, montage, collage, whatever. A, collage of me. Standing there after one of the premierships. Oh God, I'd love to see that. Man, man, it was big all down the, the side of his ribs. I think man's got a ta- man's got a tattoo of you on his body. Yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> well, and I, I tell you what, it was pretty. Uh, 
the likeness was uh, was incredible. Was yeah. it? Yeah, well, considering... Sometimes they, they look uh, like a smashed crab. Yeah, absolutely. It was better than the tattoo I've got on my left ankle. Did the, well, of myself. You know. Did the tattooist uh, do it just so that, like, his, his armpit armpit hair would be your hair? Oh, like, that's what did good. He, that would have been a nice no, touch. That's that's it nice would have went touch. down a long way. Does it look like <laughs> Billy Ray Cyrus? Just a tiny bit. There's a little bit of Billy Ray yeah, Cyrus yeah, in exactly. it. I was happy with that. I wonder if yeah. anyone's got a Sam Pang tattoo. Oh, I reckon please. they would. They'd have to be one. I reckon. Please. There'd be one somewhere out there in the world. Definitely. Yeah, oh, but apart, that, uh, from, apart from my brother, no one. <laughs> Um, and then I signed, and then Couple I signed the. Uh, so he, I met him at my uh, grandparents yeah. uh, down in Colac once. He yeah. came around, and then I signed the picture for him. And then he went to the tattoo parlor and got the signature tattoo you, on top of the photo. You met him at your grandparents. Were they then hog tied and left for dead? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cost me a few grand to. Uh, oh, I bet. To someone did. Hey, no, they, they knew me. He lived around the corner. He won't mind me telling someone. To, I know someone who's got a tattoo of me on their body, Swanee. You, do, you really do? Yeah. yeah. Who is it? Tommy Tommy G, Tommy Glasgow. Yeah. And, oh, uh, yeah, of course he does. Of course he does. It's, a, he does. it's a cracking image. Uh, Donna from Roeville. Donna, what is your question? Hello, Christy. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Don Don. Hello. Uh, no one has been ever ad- able to answer this question. So, Brownie, I have a question mm. for you. Put a slice of lemon and a slice of lime in a drink and the lime will always sink to the bottom of the glass. Mm. Take the lemon out, and the lime will rise to the top. So why does that happen, Brownie? What? It's interesting uh, because it's a fun game. Uh, I've seen this in pubs before. Where you get I've a, never heard of it. You get a fish bowl, and uh, it's got lemons in it, and you need to try and rest the 20-cent coin on the lemon and not tip over. Uh, because lemons float, and uh, if you if you get the coin to rest on the lemon, you get a free drink, Swanee. Right. Very hard to do. But anyway, lemons do float. As a green thumb, as a little bit of a farmer, the only way I could uh, explain this, I reckon, Donna, is that the skins of the lemons are very thick. Um, they seem they, they're very thick, whereas the limes, certainly my limes and all limes, their skin is very thin. No, swatting. but what she's asking is not why do limes sink and why do lemons float. No, no, that's what my explanation is. No, 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 she's not asking that. She's saying <laughs> why when there is a lime at the bottom <laughs> and, you, right. and a lemon in there too, the lime is at the bottom and the lemon's at the top and then you take the lemon out and the lime will rise. Correct. That's the mm, question. Mm. Um, well, let's say uh, that's very hard. It's a hard one, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, because uh, I thought it would have it would be all to do with the skin. I would have thought uh, the difference in the I skin. Don't think There'd be so. more air and porous, but uh, mm. but she's geez, not asking geez, that. Geez, that is really. Uh, I didn't know that that happened. Did you it. know that that happened? Uh, that no. the molecular sort of composition See, of the water seems to change when the lemon's I out. Always, I always thought it was about density that maybe the lime is more dense, but then it what doesn't make sense, and then the lime does rise to the top once you take the lemon out. That's unbelievable. Listen, this Jeez. this segment's going to be turned on its head if you actually have to answer the questions. You know that, don't you, man? I know traditionally people <laughs> ring up with a question and you give whatever answer you want, not necessarily for the well, question. But no. if, if, Normally if, he well, knows I the th- answer. I thought my initial answer was uh, spot on, but, uh, but it was, it was a two-part question. Uh, uh, that, no, it uh, wasn't. It was just a one-part question. No, well, the, 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 two <laughs> part, the initial sinking of the lime, I think I was on the money there, but the actual refloating of the lime, that's concerning. Mm-hmm. That is concerning. Is scrambling the longer, my mind. The longer you talk, the, you, the more you look like a lime singing to the bottom of a... Donna. Right, right now. you'll be sinking <laughs> onto this floor in a minute when I go bang. Bang. When he goes bang. He doesn't know, Donna, and so we're going to investigate that because that's an excellent... I'm, I need to do that um, experiment myself, obviously. Donna, in the meantime, pop some lime in the Moondog Fizzer. Mix back of 30 <laughs> flavoured seltzer. Thank you so much, everybody. Well done, Donna. Well done. Dons. Georgina from Brighton. Have you walked every street in Brighton? Oh, no. I'm just curled up in the fetal position now. I've given up. God, yeah. I, can't do much I, longer. I know, yeah. Georgina. What a pain in the ass it is, huh? Yep, it is. It's, it's, I've had enough. But anyway, mm. my good morning. And my question for Brownie is, um, why does somebody who talks with an accent lose it when they sing? You see it on the voice. Mm. When does it go? <laughs> Great well, question. Well, you, you do see mm. it. Mm. Well, Lee, Lee <laughs> Kernigan was the best. I always thought he was American. 
Mm. Yeah. You know, the country singer, and then you, you listen to him. He's an Aussie. He's an Ocker Aussie. Would you like him, my example? It's a very good example. Okay. Contribute, well, Sam. Well, well, Iggy Azalea is Australia. Yes. Mm. But then when she sings, she sounds like this. I am the, the strip club. I am the, the strip club. I am the, the strip club. I woke up like a badass bitch. Pretty All right, face we'll just get out there, As always, we just probably need yeah, to... Uh, was, that, was that line about to be pretty face with perfect tits? Well, let's go well, back to the tape. To play it, Chris. Uh, the strip club. I am the, the strip club. I am the... I woke up like a badass bitch. Pretty face with some perfect. Possibly. Oh dear. Possibly. Oh dear yeah. Georgina. Perfect teeth. Oh. Teeth, I believe teeth. it was. She got good teeth. teeth. Bit racy for 9am. Anyway. It sure right, is. Georgina, it's up as producing the show. It's just, uh, what's Georgina's the question? It's too right. lazy look at this because uh, <laughs> sometimes I, sometimes I, I yeah. think uh, country music singers and say Iggy Azalea, mm. they might Americanise their voice. You know, because it uh, seems to uh, seems to go well in those markets. But I would think, on the basis of accents, uh, we're influenced by the people around us in the way we talk. Uh, but yet, when we sing, we just sing naturally. One of the greatest examples of that is, you know, Paloma Faith. Yeah, I love her. I love her too, and she has the most unbelievable speaking voice, mm. and her singing voice sounds. Nothing like her. Absolutely nothing like her. Does she try and put it on, you think? I don't know. I mean, I'm Georgina, I'm the same. I've always wondered where does that accent go? It's like a really heavy yeah, Welsh young, accent so or something. Up. Yeah, yeah. And then she's got this really sort of soulful. So this is her. Great song. She sounds like a yeah. cartoon character. But I think it's a to diff- be like when she's just speaking. I think it's a different. Uh, it's a different exercise because you know walking and running are two different things. True. I know when Olivia, I'm only going to go off my daughter here. Olivia doesn't sound anything like when, when she sings. She doesn't sound anything like when she speaks. She sounds great. So there you go, Georgina. Mystery. George, it was a great she answer. You wasn't up, it? You up, has it, Georgina? Yes, immensely. Should we send Georgina? Do you like wine, no Georgina? Answer. Are you drinking too much oh, in lockdown? I love it. Yeah. I live in Brighton. God, of love it. You do. Six bottles of Zonzo Estate wine. The good stuff. Enjoy authentic Italian oh, thank cuisine. You. Paired with the perfect job. Zonzo Estate in the heart of the Yarra Don't Valley. Don't drink it all in one night like I did last lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Chrissy Salmon Brownie Podcast. Oh, Mr. Fuji. I want some tropical stuff. About it, baby. Swiss giraffes. Funny, I've got, some, I've got a lot of good stuff over here. Great. Some of it very, very sad. Oh. In case you're wondering, our fans of The Wire. Mm. <sighs> Michael K. Williams, of course, best known as Omar, uh, is uh, was found dead in the living room of his Williamsburg penthouse, uh, suspected um, overdose. Just nothing more you can say. Very, very sad. Omar, sad. Omar, by the way, one of the great characters oh. in television history. How's this, The Wire? Mm. We all watched The Wire, haven't we? Yep. And when do you reckon The Wire was on? I reckon 2002. Yeah, exactly. Jeez. It's tw- almost 20 years ago, The mm. Wire. Yeah. Uh, from 2002 to 2008. And Omar was one of the great characters. Oh. Uh, my favourite Omar. Well, we, it's our favourite Omar quote, Swanee. When you come at the king... You best not miss. Mm. Great quote. I remember watching uh, The Wire when I had my, had my head caved in. I was just there. I spent a week in hospital and then uh, the next Knocked four it weeks. Over. Uh, the next four weeks, uh, once I was out of my drug induced haze, um, I spent the next three or four weeks watching the whole five series. It yeah. was unbelievable. And if you bring up the wire, bunk. love bunk. Oh, bunk. 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 If you bring it up, Omar is always everyone's favourite character. Hey, he's just uh, so sad. Yes, um, in some uh, sadder news, Matthew Guy has returned as Victorian opposition leader. No, no, no. no. Uh, um, Michael, no, 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 no. Well, I mean, Michael O'Brien is out. Yes. Uh, he's been ousted. Ousted's yeah, a good word, isn't it? He could walk in here now and we'd all say... Matthew Guy. Who, O'Brien or yeah. Guy? Guy's Either been, of them. Both. And And we'd say just a... A uh, very strong flat right, please. <laughs> no, no, and a, and a, no, and a no, long he's black. He's dancing on a, Who's that guy? He used to go with that all the time. Dancing, who's that guy? You're <laughs> dancing on a man's grave. He's been ousted in a dramatic leadership spill this morning. This morning. So Matthew yeah. Guy has made a comeback because previously he was. Uh, he was, yeah. Um, well, he like ousted. Rudd, he'd be like Kevin Rudd and Julie Gillard. 
and they flip flop there for a while. Yeah, okay, except I, no one yeah, cares. Yeah, asking each other. I, I got to say, I saw. That's right. If you want, so like, this was in the works. You know, what I mean, this has been talked about. Matthew Guy challenging M- Michael O'Brien for a couple of days now, a couple of weeks. I saw a tweet from Doctor Turf, the great John Rothfield, mm. and he said, "For that, anyone wondering, uh, you know, just to kind of sum up this Liberal Party possible spill, if you want to know what it's like, it's like uh, in, in poker, it's like a pair of twos." Uh, challenging a pair of threes. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, that's good stuff for the turkey. Yeah. Fantastic. It was magnificent. Threes win, but oh, yeah. what, what, what wins? Yeah. The threes or the twos? It was amazing. <laughs> that is uh, and I just wanted to finally, just wanted to finish with. <laughs> that's good. I love Fantastic. That. God, I love Dr. Turkey. I'll write that down. Um, Snoop Dogg Swanee. Yes. He has announced a tour of Australia scheduled for late next year. Excellent. Uh, the first time that the music icon has uh, made the trip down under since he headlined the Big Day Out in 2014. So wow. it'll be almost eight years since hip-hop superstar Snoop Dogg has been on our fair shores. He'll be in Last Perth, time he was Sydney. here, his passport said Snoop Lion, I believe. Yes, that's Did right. It? Mm. Well, he'll be at Rod Laver Arena October next year and he'll be playing all his big hits. He's promised all his big hits. What are they? In the crib, ma. Drop it like it's hot. Drop, Drop it, it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. And what else? Everyone's, everyone's, this is probably his biggest one. Did somebody say that you that's the encore. Yeah, like a G. See, all we dogs got to eat. Love the song. I know it was a big build-up, but we got, that's genuine news. He's coming. That is great. I'm sure he's got to sing that. You reckon, uh, uh, that's a great question. Do you reckon that Snoop Dogg sings, sings Menu Log at his, at his, at his concert next <laughs> I'm going to say yes. Start the encore. And if he doesn't, me and Dana are going to start the chat. Menu Log. Menu Log. Menu Log. All right, here it is. Show will be back tomorrow. Chrissy, Sam and Brownie. Oh, unless it's a weekend. Hanover 100.